Hi guys, I hope you're well. If you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Blakemore and I'm a teacher here in Dubai. In this video, I wanted to share with you a Google Classroom tutorial. I'm very aware that I've made a range of different tutorials before, some to do with Seesaw, some to do with Google Classroom and some of my top tips, but I've never actually gotten down and done a full tutorial on just how to use Google Classroom. And I'm still very aware that some people will still be doing online learning as a result of school closures due to everything that's happened in the world. And then there will be others of you out there who are just doing a type of blended learning where you've got children in the classroom, but you've still got some who are isolating and things like that. So you still need to be using a learning management platform such as Google Classroom. So in this video, I'm going to talk through the basic setup procedures and then talk through how to use it, how to set material assignments, what the difference between the two is, how to invite children classroom and all those different bits and pieces. If after this video you feel like you want to go into a little bit more depth into some of my top tips, I've also made a Google Classroom top tips video that you can check out using the link above there. If you haven't already, before we jump into the video, feel free to like it and subscribe to the channel so that you can see some of my other EdTech tutorials when I release them too. So to access Google Classroom, you're going to want to go to what my class call the waffle up in the top corner, scroll down to the bottom and you will see Classroom here. Now it will ask you to create a Google Classroom. To do that, I've already made one, but it's really simple. You're just going to click on the plus in the corner and you're going to click the create a class. For the purpose of this video, I've already created one and it's really straightforward to do that. After a little bit of time, something will load up and the first thing you'll see pop up is this uh, create announcements. So this is what we call the stream. And on the stream, what I like to do personally is post a range of different announcements, things that are quite generic. So it might be that I'm going to post some sort of birthday message. I might post some general uh, logins or something that's needed for a specific day. I don't generally use the stream too much because otherwise it gets quite overwhelming with stream and classwork that we'll look at in a second. Now, obviously the first thing you're going to want to do once you've created a Google Classroom and explained what you're going to call it and things like that is get children to join it. Now there's two main ways of doing that. The first way is by pressing this display and getting the children to go back to theirs and click the plus and I'll show you how to do that now. So you'll see this is J for Jeff the student. We're going to use Jeff the student and Bob the student quite a lot today. You'll see create or join your first class. Now I've copied the code in so I'm just going to join the class and I'm going to enter the class code. From there, I'm just going to press join. Now you can see I've joined into the example Google Classroom, but at the moment there is nothing inside it. I'm also going to spend a little bit of time uh, just joining Bob in so that we can use him later on. Back to my own account, the teacher account. First thing we're going to look at is the settings. Now in the settings, one of the things I like to do is number one, personally send the codes through email. You'll see an invitation link here that you can just simply copy and then send through emails that you might have through Gmail. In addition, you can change how you're going to use things on the stream. So you can see students can post and comment. Students can only comment and only teachers can post or comment. And it's completely up to you, dependent on what you think is suitable. On the classwork on the stream, you can show condensed notifications, hide notifications, show attachment details. I always choose to uh, hide notifications so that the children aren't getting too many pop-ups come through. I'm gonna save that for now. In addition, for my own personal sanity, one of the main things I like to do, and this is shown within the Google Classroom organization video, is go into the settings, go down to class notifications, and just make sure I turn off the email notifications for Google Classroom, because otherwise I promise you, you will get a tremendous amount come through. So back on classes, one of the things that you're going to need to do is set assignments for your children. Now on classwork, you can see I've already set up some topics. To do that, it's really straightforward. You're gonna to go to create and you'll see assignments, quiz assignment, material, reuse post is really useful, but we'll just want this topic. For now, we're just going to call it something like humanities. Once that's done, you'll see another different one pop up and you can change the arrangement as you'd like to suit the needs of your class. So inside each folder, you'll then see different bits of work, but don't worry, you'll also be able to see them without clicking into them. So for now, we're gonna create an assignment so that the children can do something with their assignment. Now, there is a Rubik's section Personally, through the 15 weeks of online distance learning, I did not use that. However, secondary, I know, will use that to some extent. So you will find more complex tutorials on using that on YouTube. Now, for this one, I'm going to set some Google 
classroom instructions. And I'm going to be setting this piece of work. This is a PDF that I'm going to attach in the video description for this video completely free. And it will talk you through many of the different steps that I go through within this video. Uh, I'm not going to charge anything for it, but if you find it useful, a, a like and a subscribe goes a long, long way. And thank you for that. Instructions. I always set some really one, two, three, four listed bullet pointed uh, instructions and then adding material. You can do a range of different things. You can add a link which is a link, things like YouTube I've linked before. Uh, website links is really useful to build up a really comprehensive lesson. Uh, you can just link the YouTube video straight away, but again, I just find adding the link is a little bit easier. And you can also add things from your computer. What I do the majority of the time is add things through Google Drive. Now, to save myself time, I open something up in advance in Google Drive, and then it always pops up in this recents. Otherwise, you've got to go through your Google Drive and searching through Start, and it's quite difficult if you've got quite a comprehensive Google Drive within your school, which some of you out there will do. So I'm going to add that and press Insert. From there, we're going to need to look at how children view it. So you can see students can view this file. From there, that means that children are only able to see that information. They can't do anything with this file. Now, that's great if it's just material and you want the children, for example, to look at something where it's just some information to support them and scaffold the learning. You can also do students can edit this file, but please be aware that this is more useful when it's something where you want children to work together as a class, because otherwise you've got children editing the document from all sorts of different angles, things get deleted. And that leads me to the next stage of wanting to use make copy for each student. What this will do is create a copy for each student that the children can adapt and hand in to. We're going to look at what this will look like for the children so that you can see how they see it and then also how they submit those pieces. So once we've done that, we can assign it to a topic. We're going to go for English. You can also create a topic through there. You can either assign it automatically or what I usually do to save myself some time throughout the week. Again, organization is schedule. For the purposes of this video, we're just going to assign it straight away because that's important. One thing I've forgotten to mention is that you can also assign it to specific students. So if I just wanted to set something specific for differentiation purposes to Bob the student, then I could just click on him and set it for him. For now, I'm just going to click it for all students and assign it. And here you can see that it has been posted and I'm going to go into the pupil account to see what it looks like for them. So for Jeff to be able to see the work, he's going to go into classwork. You'll see all sorts of information, but the assignment is there. If we go on to view assignment, you can see that it has a name for him. So Jeff student, and it's created that document for him. If he was to click onto that, then he would be able to manage and adapt this document because it is ultimately his. He can add things in and do all sorts of different things so he could share what it looks like for him in this document. And from there, then he can come back to it. This is a really important part. You need to tell the students that once they've completed an activity, they can add a class comment, use Moat, that's a, an add-on. Make sure you watch my add-ons video for really effective Google Classroom and Google extensions. Once you've done that, you're going to get them to either add additional content. So it could be that they add a photo or a supporting document or something along those lines. This is really useful for slightly upper key stage two and into secondary. And from there, they're going to hand in that piece of work. They can choose to unsubmit it, but be aware that the children can't edit it at the moment because they've submitted it. So to edit it, they would need to unsubmit that piece of work. Now I'm back on my teacher account. You'll be able to see that I've got two people in my class. One person has handed it in and one person still has it assigned. If I was to go on to view assignments, you'll see these two here. What I like to do is hold down command click to open all of these different um, tasks in separate tabs. And then I just use this tab manager plus that I've mentioned in another video to quickly flick between them. For now, I'm gonna go onto it and see what's happened. Now, obviously very little has happened because you've seen this in this video. Um, however, I can then add different bits of information if I want to. And if I'm not happy, I can add a comment here, either through moat or through private comments. 
and then simply return that to them. Personally, I tend to just leave it if it's something that I'm fully satisfied with. So then I'm not continually uh, bouncing back between returning and accepting work and things like that. If I wanted to send a message to all of the pupils in regards to this here, what I would do is click on to assigned and then you can see a little message button that pops up there and it's really effective to message pupils about a piece of work. One of the things that works really well is adding other teachers into your Google Classroom. The reason that's really effective is one, they can also see other bits of work that you have done and you can see work that they have set for their class. What's really effective is by doing that, you can use the reuse post from other people's Google Classrooms and it makes life a lot, lot easier. Please make sure you watch my top tips for Google Classroom so that you learn how to use the reuse post button in more effective detail. In the people section, you're going to look at students. If you need to do anything with your students, you're going to click onto them. You see the actions button here. You can remove them, mute them, uh, if you're getting too many email pop-ups from that child, or you can simply email them from there. If you needed to, you can email all of the pupils at one time, and that's a slightly easier way to do it. If you need to add pupils in, then you can type in email addresses of specific pupils that you need to add into. And with this only really being a crash course, I'm fairly confident that this is a great starting point for you to get set up with Google Classroom. Please make sure you check out the Google Classroom instructions that I've provided within the description of this video. And that marks the end of the video. Hopefully you found this tutorial useful and you feel more confident using Google Classroom in the future with your class. If you find this video useful, feel free to like it so that it's recommended to other people. And if you're not already, feel free to subscribe to the channel where I create a range of teaching, ed tech, and also lifestyle in Dubai videos too. Hopefully I will see you in the next one, but until then, I'm out.